Ladies and gentlemen, once in a lifetime, there comes a... <laughs> there comes a music experience. So no, 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 I'm going with that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, please welcome on stage the next act. She is... Oh, you know her gender, but do you know her agenda? <laughs> You're about to find out. It's Andrea Watson, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Hello. Uh, hello. Hi, my name's Andrea. I'm always happy, always smiling, always joking, which is why I lost the job at the funeral home. <laughs> I've just turned 43. I know, it's the blood of virgins. Um, I turned 43 recently and I got a free pen in the post and a letter saying, are you saving for your funeral? Can you believe it? It wasn't off an insurance company, it was a disgruntled ex. <laughs> but it did make me think, because once you start getting into your 40s, you start thinking about your mortality. And you need to make plans so that your family know what your wishes are. So I've put them in place, and my plans are that I would quite like to be scattered off the top of a mountain. Preferably after death. <laughs> Definitely after cremation. But also I've always thought about what song I would like as well for the funeral. I'd like to be obviously cremated, so I'd be lying serene in the coffin, on the conveyor belt, just before it goes through the curtain, and I'd have the Lars, There She Goes. Do you know it from the 90s? <laughs> there she goes. Stop the conveyor belt, bring it back. There she goes again! <laughs> but I think I'm really brave by wanting to be scattered off the top of a mountain because a few years ago I was absolutely petrified of heights. So I did one of these crazy things, face your fear and do it anyway. I jumped off a mountain with an Austrian strapped to my back, <laughs> called Hans. Luckily for me, he had a parachute. So we were all right. And it worked. I'm no longer afraid of heights. Petrified of Austrians' cold hands, though. <laughs> At the moment, uh, me and my boyfriend decided to call it a day. Oh. Which is a shit name for a baby. <laughs> but we don't have any imagination. <laughs> Guess which day he was born on? 15th. <laughs> Yeah, I am single at the minute. We have split up and we've decided that we'll continue to be friends. Well, I say friends. Uh, we don't see each other anymore or call each other anymore. We just tend to stalk each other on Facebook to see who's having the better life <laughs> and winning. <laughs> I did post a picture on Facebook of my garden and it was really kind of him because I hadn't seen him for a while, but he called me up and he said, I think you have a chlamydia bush. <laughs> Which is really sweet of him because I don't know the name of flowers. <laughs> so yes, I am single and I've... Uh, I don't mind really because I'm fiercely independent, but the only thing is that the celibacy is making me a bit narky, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, I found that I'm very unsympathetic these days. For example, a friend of mine read an article in a newspaper out loud to me and it said that a Texas woman had been in a coma for 10 years and then had a baby. And I said, oh my God, that's horrible. That's awful. She went, isn't it? And I went, yeah, even people in comas are having more sex than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I really need to get back out there, I think. So I started thinking about the kind of man that I would like. And really, it's got to come down to a man like my dog. Because then you're asking for somebody who's loyal, dependable, yeah, you get me? And somebody who's so excited every time you come home, he has a small erection. <laughs> what else could you ask for? My mum tries to help. She asks me, do you ever get chatted up at these gigs that you do? And I went, well, actually, yeah. One time when I was in London, I got chatted up by a straight man a bisexual man and a gay woman all in the same night. She went, blimey, bet you didn't know which way to turn. <laughs> <laughs> but she always getting things wrong, my mum. She gave me a drugs talk before I went off to university. She said, make sure when you go there, because I know what drugs are, that you never take smash. <laughs> <laughs> and 
true, because I am a good girl and I like to keep my mum pleased, I mashed all of my potatoes to lots of smack, but always mashed my own potatoes. But my, my nephew's now 18 and uh, we, we, we've come to a similar kind of discussion. At Mother's Day, we're all sitting around having a meal and she turned to him and she went, Charlie, darling, have you ever had a boner on a night out? <laughs> What? She went, have you ever had a boner on a night out? Have you ever seen a friend with a boner on a night out? Have you ever seen your friend with a boner on a night out and wanted to try it? My nephew was sinking under the table. I went, hold on mum, I know what you're like. What's a boner? She went, oh, it's a cigarette that you put marrow jam in. <laughs> went, that's a joint. She went, oh, what's a boner then? So then it's her falling under the table, being embarrassed. <laughs> but I haven't met a man. Mm. Oh. Yeah, we've been chatting a little bit. Um, we've met for a couple of coffees. Um, he told me that he was a BG. And I looked at him and I thought, he's lying. Because I know who the BGs are. And he doesn't look like Morris, Robin, or the other one. <laughs> I can't remember his name now. But he doesn't look like any of them, and two of them are dead. So he's definitely not in the Bee Gees, but he kept saying, yeah, I've been working as a Bee Gee for a few years now, but I don't like to talk about it. I've been going around the world as a Bee Gee, but I don't like to talk about it. I've met Tom Hanks as a Bee Gee, but I don't like to talk about it. Bloody hell, it's all he ever does talk about. <laughs> but as I said to him, I know you don't like to talk about it, because obviously you've been through a tragedy, but <laughs> I need to know. Because it doesn't really follow through that you're a BG. Because what do you mean? I said, well, you're short, bald, and from Wigan. And I can't figure out which of the BGs you'd be in your tribute band. Bodyguard. Ah, that makes more sense then. Because he did look a bit like Jason Stratham. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to try him out, see what he's like, and see whether he's like my little dog, and see whether I get a licked ear in the morning. But if he starts wiping his arse on the carpet, he's out of there. <laughs> Thank you very much.